Hey everyone, welcome to my weekly house call. Your chance to ask me your questions and this week's question is, my doctor says I have a fatty liver and I should stay away from fat. But do high fat foods cause a fatty liver? And you got any tips to help me with my fatty liver? Well, a fatty liver is a dangerous disease and it's highly misunderstood. Now, some of you may have heard of foie gras. Foie gras is that French term for fatty liver that's used to describe a delicacy made from duck or goose liver. What happens to the livers of these animals as a result of the controversial practice of overfeeding is what you could be doing to your own liver without knowing it. For those people who have fatty liver, which is about, by the way, 70 to 90 million Americans and is now the number one cause of liver transplants, it's essentially what they have. It's like foie gras, the liver. They have a liver that's full of fat and it's a major cause of chronic disease, of inflammation in the body, of heart attacks. You see, foie gras is made by force feeding ducks or geese, not fat, but sugar in the form of corn and starch. It's a really sad, horrible practice. In the body, this sugar turns on a fat production factory in the liver. It's a process known as lipogenesis or the genesis or birth or making of fat, which is lipo, which is the body's normal response to sugar. In fact, fructose, which is the sugar and high fructose corn syrup, actually ramps up the lipogenesis response like crazy. Fatty liver creates a whole cascade of issues. It causes inflammation in your body. And this inflammation creates insulin resistance and prediabetes, which causes your body to deposit fat, not just in your liver, but also around your organs and your belly. It's called organ fat or visceral fat. It's the dangerous fat. This dangerous belly fat that's caused by sugar and starch in your diet then creates even more problems. It causes you to have high triglycerides and low good or HDL cholesterol. And it causes you to have these small dangerous LDL or cholesterol particles that are really the cause of heart attacks. In fact, having a fatty liver puts you at great risk for having a heart attack and most people have no idea they have it. And shockingly now we see 12 year old boys who lived on soda for years needing liver transplants from fatty liver. Now that's pretty scary. We really need to think about what we're doing to our kids by feeding them these toxic substances. So you don't wanna end up with a fatty liver or a liver transplant. So you don't wanna end up needing to be on medications to fix the complications of fatty liver like high blood pressure and diabetes and heart attacks and high cholesterol. You wanna to get to the root of the problem. The good news is there's hope. As you now know, unlike sugar or refined carbs, even a little bit of protein, dietary fat does not cause insulin to be secreted by your pancreas. So the fat you eat gets burned, not stored, unless of course you eat it with carbs. That's bad news. That's called sweet fat. You don't want that. That's like a bagel with butter or a donut or a french fries, right? Fat and carbs. When you eat more of the right fat, you increase the speed of your metabolism, you stimulate fat burning, and you cut your hunger. Fat turns off, now get this, fat, eating fat turns off the fat production factory in your liver, so no fatty liver and no liver transplants. Considering that fatty liver is caused by too much sugar and carbs, and is now the most common liver disease and the leading cause of liver transplant, cutting the carbs and boosting the saturated fats may be part of the solution. Now, I know it seems kind of confusing, but repeatedly the research shows that it's carbs, not fat, that causes more fat in your body and in your belly and in your liver and bad cholesterol. So you see, it's actually the carbs that trigger inflammation through the liver. We've all been so focused on saturated fat as the bad guy that we miss the real bad guy, which is sugar and fructose. Our government tells us to limit our saturated fats to seven to 10% of our calories, while at the same time telling us it's okay to have up to 25% of our calories from sugar. Really? One quarter of our calories from sugar. Now, the good news is the 2015 dietary guidelines said we should reduce added sugar to less than 10% of our calories. This was a big advance. Now, I go into this research in my new book, Eat Fat, Get Thin, but the take home message here is that saturated fats lower inflammation when, only get this, when consumed with a low refined carb and low sugar diet. It's also high in fiber, lots of veggies and nuts and seeds, and that has a lot of omega-3 fats, which is like sardines and fish oil and so forth. Now there are blood tests available that can detect a fatty liver. 
You can also see it on an ultrasound or a CAT scan. And if your test comes back abnormal, you're kind of in trouble. But even if your test comes back normal, you might not be out of the woods. It's important to know that a liver function test does not always detect a fatty liver. An ultrasound can be more sensitive. The bottom line is, if you eat a lot of sugar and flour, if you have a little bit of belly fat, or if you crave sugar and carbs and starch and sugar, you probably have some degree of a fatty liver. Now, when you have a fatty liver, you need to think about the damage it's causing. You don't want to end up with a liver transplant. You don't want to end up needing to be on tons of medications to fix the complications of a fatty liver, like high blood pressure and diabetes and heart disease and bad cholesterol. You want to get to the root of the problem. So there's some really simple things you can do with your diet, with exercise, and with supplements to help heal your fatty liver. First, cut out all high fructose corn syrup from your diet, period, 100% cold turkey, no exceptions. If you see it on any label for any product, whether it's salad dressing or ketchup or tomato sauce or yogurt, don't eat it. Now think about it. Most servings of tomato sauce you buy in a jar have more sugar per serving than two Oreo cookies. Get rid of all that high fructose corn syrup from your diet, 100%, no exceptions. Also, reduce or eliminate starchy foods. Get rid of white processed flour. Even whole grain flours can be a problem. It's common to find too much of these starchy foods in the classic American diet, or what we call the SAD diet, that standard American diet. All those things are gonna produce a fatty liver. Next, add some good things to your diet to help heal your fatty liver. Good quality vegetables, non-starchy, nuts and seeds, some fruit, some good quality animal protein like chicken, fish, grass-fed meat, and good oils like olive oil, macadamia nut oil, avocados, nuts and seeds, coconut butter, and fish oil. Because in fact, MCT oil, which is in coconut oil, has been shown to reverse fatty liver in animal studies. That's impressive. Even while they were still giving them a liver toxin, alcohol, which causes fatty liver, when they gave them MCT oil, their fatty liver got better. Now that doesn't mean you should drink a lot and take MCT oil, it just means you should take MCT oil. Good fats like these are really anti-inflammatory and they help repair your liver. There's also some supplements you can take as well to help your fatty liver, which I talk about in my book. Now the plan of my new book, Eat Fat, Get Thin, is the perfect way to reset your body for optimal health. You can also improve your metabolism through exercise. Now this is a fabulous way to improve insulin resistance and reduce fatty liver. And of course, use the right supplements. Now these things help boost something in your liver called glutathione. I encourage you to read my blog on glutathione. This is a powerful antioxidant and detoxifying compound that your body makes and you can help make more of it when you take certain supplements, including an acetylcysteine, lipoic acid, milk thistle, and some of the B vitamins. Now we also use other things like B vitamins and magnesium and all these things help repair and heal your liver. They're also detoxifying liver repairing superfoods that I recommend eating. Focus on the broccoli family. I love this family of foods. I try to have at least a cup or two every day. Kale, collards, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, arugula, daikon radish, all these are wonderful foods that can help repair and heal your liver. Also, garlic and onions are great. They're full of sulfur. It's a great detoxifier. I promise you, you do not want a fatty liver. You need a healthy liver to help you deal with all the junk and chemicals in her environment. So when you have a healthy liver, your body stays healthy, you don't get sick, and you can feel good, which is really what I want for everybody. So now I wanna hear from you. Do you have a fatty liver? What steps have you taken to heal your liver? And comment below on my Facebook page and be sure to share this video with anyone who could use the information. And please submit your questions to drhyman.com and maybe next week I'll make a house call to you.